Hi and welcome to On The Limit, a show that's a smash hit. This week, more of the JGTC's talent-packed field strut their stuff. Heat, humidity, history. The H words rule in the Autobax Japan GT Championships fourth round. This is an historic first for a Japanese motor racing series, as the GT Championship makes its offshore debut. Venue for the international launch of the series is Malaysia's Sepang Formula One circuit, a place where the air is heavily humid and where the temperature's typically around 36 degrees. Out on the track, it's in the 50s, and in the cars, it climbs to the 60s. The Malaysian Championship round follows two unofficial speed festival demo events at Sepang. The last one by Juichi Wakasaka in the SO Ultraflow Supra. He and teammate Akira Ida come here on a high, leading the series points. And still they're not hot favourites at Sepang. Not when their Toyota Supra is carrying 90 kilos of penalty weight. As a result, they end up only ninth quickest in qualifying. Heat's inevitably going to be a factor today as the field prepares for 54 laps in high temperatures and humidity levels. Start time now for this historic round of the Autobax Japan GT Championship in Malaysia. Ralph Furman on the left in that Mobile One Honda. Takeshi Suchira pulls out wide. Keiichi Suchira in third place. Oh, and a bit of a tangle there between two of the Honda NSXs. And another one now. That's uh, Eric Komas making contact with the Z Supra. So that one got turned around as well as these two. Hiroki Kato in the number 100 Raybrick car. There's Kurosawa getting underway again as well. And Richard Lyons in the yellow and green Takata car as the other casualty there. They just get underway before the VMAC leads through the GT300 field. They'll be happy about that. They would have been right at the very very back of the field otherwise. Now travelling on board with Satoshi Motoyama coming off 11th place. That's his view of the incident in the first turn. Whoa! Just manages to avoid those two Hondas. Slots in behind the Calsonic skyline which dive to the other side. Now travelling on board with Hiroki Kato. See coming down the inside Eric Komas in that Nissan. Got a great start and left no room for Kato to turn in. Made contact with Lions and those two both jammed up in this first turn. No apparent anger there as they try to get restarted and get underway. But out front, Ralph Furman doing the job. Takeshi Suchir in second place. The unrelated Keiichi Suchir in third. This is on board with Motoyama as he tries to go by Hironori Takeuchi's Toyota. Well, he's got the job done, I think, too. Looks like Takeuchi gave him quite a bit of room in that corner. So Motoyama up to seventh. What an eventful first lap that's been. There we go. There's first, second, third stretched out the fourth place Nissan. Eric Komas, who made a great start off about eighth place on the grid. And behind him, Daisuke Ito. Oh, now Morio Nitta in trouble. That's going into turn one as well as the GT300 field pours past him. That's been costly. He was in third place going into the corner. Now probably back about 10th or 12th. Travelling on board with uh, Takeshi Suchia in second place. Look at the gap that Ralph Furman's opening up already. Furman predicted before the start that if he could just get through turn one safely, the others wouldn't get near him. This is GT300 leader Shinsuke Shibahara in the VMAC. There's the third place car, the Mazda RX-7 of Haruhiko Matsumoto and this big bunch not too far behind. But Shibahara doing the job out front in that beautiful looking purpose-built VMAC. Richard Lyons in pit lane, that will no doubt be as a result of his earlier incident. Oh, and now trouble for the VMAC, locked up completely on his own and don't know what happened there, but Shibahara just along for the ride with the brakes hard on and still speared straight off the end of the track. 
Trying to get restarted, needs a push. This is big trouble for the VMAG. Bad news for him, of course, is good news for Minoru Tanaka in that uh, Wet Sport MRS out front of this GT300 race now. They go past the stricken VMAC. Oh, this is a fight for third place. Keiichi Suchia under attack for Merrick Comas with Ito and Hashino not too far behind either. And there's a good fight going on here as well. This is Takeuchi in the number one Surumo car. He's in eighth place and there's four Toyotas behind him trying to get by. At the back of that group, that's the Zent car of Kurosawa who was delayed in that uh, first turn incident. Also the 100 Raybrick car of Hiroki Kato right there as well. But now they've got the yellow flag. Safety car out on the track. So Ralph Furman's good work in the opening laps of this race to get a big break on uh, Takeshi Suchia. Now all taken away and this is the reason why. So Furman gets the restart done very, very well. Luckily for him, has that BMW, that's a GT300 car, so quite a bit slower than the GT500. Caught between him and Takeshi Suchio. Look at the fight going on between Keiichi Suchio and the Autobacks Honda and Eric Comas struggling. Oh, Comas comes down the inside of him, bangs into the side. Suchio gets turned around, gets hit by somebody else as well. Motoyama picking his way through the debris one more time, same as lap one. Now Suchia trying to fire that car up. The Mosler already stopped there. I think that's from a separate incident. Oh, and this is the VMAX still in pit lane under repair. Things are going to get busy around here. This is fourth place on back to about 12th, all in one big line since the restart. So plenty of action promised from this part of the race, that's for sure. The yellow corn McLaren with Naoki Hattori at the wheel. At the back of that group, oh, this is Daisuke Ito in trouble. That's probably a result of him clipping the back of Keiichi Suchia's Honda earlier this lap. Now this big long line of cars, Motoyama at the front of it. You can see in the background there Kurosawa and the Zent Supra. Looks like he's the one trying to push on, but look at the gap that our leader's got now. Ralph Furman really opening up a gap on uh, second place to Kishi Suchia. Oblivious it seems to all the dramas behind him. This is still this fight going on with the Zen Super. Looks like he got on the brakes late and right up the back of him went the yellow called McLaren. Bit of frontal contact, turns it around. Luckily, nobody's run straight into him. But Hattori now trying to find a gap in the traffic so he can turn it around and get on with it. And look how costly this has become. Probably 12 cars poured past him in that time. Look at the gap the Mobile One Honda has now. Furman just continuing to ease away in the lead of this race, seemingly in a class of his own. There's the second place car, the Tom's Toyota of uh, Takeshi Suchia, coming down on the right hand side of the track, and in the background, the Nissan skyline of Eric Comas in third place. Big gaps opening up between these guys. Here's Takeuchi into pit lane. Problems for him. This is way before the, the halfway mark. Looks like the front left may be flat. And some other problem though. It's not a driver change, too soon for that. So dramas for the uh, reigning champion. This is Comas, doing a good job in the number 23 Castrol Skyline. The Frenchman is very, very keen to be going out on a high note with this car, which ends its competitive life in this race today. So the old Skyline is uh, stepping aside. A brand new one comes out for the next round. And talking of skylines, here's Hoshino into the pits, Katsuyoshi Hoshino. This looks like it is the first of the scheduled stops, the Raybrick car also in. Caught up in that first corner incident, of course. And here's the race leader, Furman, in to hand over to Sugiyo Matsuda. So the pit stops in full swing now. Oh, and problems here, lots of smoke around the FK Massimo car. The Toyota Supra looks like Seiji Ara has come in, has got out of the car. They're holding back the uh, Yamaji from getting in. Oh, now flames, a fuel fire in the back of the car. That was Yamaji in the foreground. Definitely wouldn't want to be getting into that just yet. So that's a major problem for them. There's the GT300 leader, Tanaka. You can see the Mazda RX-7 in the background, closing up a little bit, I think in the uh, late stages of the first half of the race. Takeshi Sachia still to stop in the number 36 Toyota Tom's car, now takes the lead of the race of course, Furman having stopped. Here's the 19 car now in the pit lane, so the GT300 leader's in, also uh, Kurosawa coming to hand over to Paolo Montin, the Zent car, 
and the number 22 car, Michael Crum, resumes in that. Here's the Mazda RX-7 that was running second in GD300, also in for its stop. And here too is uh, Komas's car, now handed over to Masami Kagiyama. So let's see what the Nissans can do for this farewell race. Let's see if they can get up on the podium. Certainly haven't been anywhere near to it so far this season, but this has been a standout first half of the race here at Sepang. Takeshi Suchia coming into the pit lane now. This is the current race leader. Ralph Furman having stopped earlier, of course. Former motorcycle ace Wayne Gardner there waiting to jump in. Looks like a good quick stop, but it will not be enough to hold back that Mobile One car from taking the lead again. It had such a big lead before the pit stop started. And sure enough, now Sugiya Matsuda has restored that lead out front. The Nakajima Racing Mobile Honda was very dominant in the first round of the Japanese series, has had some bad luck in the last two rounds, but now come back strongly. Oh, and look at this, the Mazda RX-7 has now got ahead of the Wed Sport MRS that was leading GT300 before the pit stops. At the moment, this car, the number two Honda, leads GT300, but what an RB at the wheel of that car is yet to stop as is Takeyuki Aoki in the second place, Dacian Nissan Silvia. These two due to stop pretty soon, so they will drop back and it looks like the Mazda RX-7 will now be the leader. The heat here at Sepang is really intense and this is one casualty so far, the Mosler driver, Go Mifuni, here uh, getting some treatment after his spell. The local Malaysian team in for their pit stop in the BMW. This is Genji Hashimoto resuming the race, or getting into the race. Charles Kwan from Hong Kong just hops out, tries to get cooled down a little. Travelling on board with Wayne Gardner as he tries to put a couple of the other Toyotas a lap down. Oh, and he's tagged him, I think, or just swerved to miss him and turned the car around. So second place, Gardner in trouble. Gets it fired up, has to head across the gravel trap. Looking behind to see how much of a gap he has. Here comes one of the Nissans. This will be Kagiyama coming down the outside of him. That will take away second place. Is he going to get it? Yes, Kagiyama has got him. What a costly moment that was for Gardner, trying to get by Yuji Tashikawa's car, which is a lap down, and now has lost that second place. The Honda that's leading GT300 now in the pits for its driver change. That means they'll drop out of the lead. And here on board with Gardner up ahead of him, Dominic Schwager, who also got past during that little tangle, but is a lap down, so hasn't taken a place away. Just gives Gardner more work to do before he can set off in pursuit of Kagiyama. Has he got the pass done? Well, no, he hasn't. But now I think he has. This is the new GT300 leader, Nobuteru Taniguchi. A real change of fortune for this team. Crashed out on the first lap of the last round. On board again with Gardner. Now he's got Kagiyama lined up. Comes down the inside of him. Wait for it. Yes, he's done it. So he's reclaimed second place. Schwager confuses things just a little by taking on uh, Kagiyama as well. Tries to muscle his way by and unlap himself. And Kagiyama's having none of that, I don't think. Ah, well, he may have to give way by the look of it. Two fights here, Satoru Goto and the Wed Sport MRS under attack from Masataka Yanagida for second place in GT300 and behind them the two Toyota Supras, that's Juichi Wakasaka in the SO car and Tashikawa in the Surumo car. Now this fight for third place, Kagiyama fighting off Paolo Montin in the Zent Supra. And in GT300, Yanagida has got second place away from the Toyota MRS. The Zen Supra was very, very quick after its first corner incident in the first half of the race in Kurosawa's hands. And now Paolo Montin really pouring the pressure on Kagiyama as he tries to continue where his teammate left off. He tries down the outside. Oh, he drives into the back of the skyline, turns Kagiyama's car around. Look at the bodywork fly off it. Kagiyama goes into the gravel trap. He will be a very, very angry, I would say, and frustrated man. Look at the rear damage there. 
That's a lot of damage. Kagiyama, though, determined to try and get back on the track and salvage what they hoped was going to be a dream result here for this last outing for that Nissan Skyline. Look at the debris coming out from under the car as he gets amongst some of the GT300 cars. The Zent car looks like it came through relatively unscathed. Montin now in third place, of course. Now Kagiyama gets a bit more speed up. Ah, but look at the debris and look at the damage under that car. Out front in the lead and very, very grateful, I would think, that he's well clear of all this drama going on behind him. Sugiya Matsuda looks like he's heading for a victory. Got a big gap now on second place, of course, with the problems for Gardner and now the problems for Kagiyama and Montem. Similarly untroubled is uh, Nobuteru Taniguchi out front in the Amamiya RX-7. Now with a big gap back to second place. Oh, and it's all over for Kagiyama. He's out of the car and out of the race. Taniguchi, no race win for this team in about a year. So this will be a standout result if they can pull it off. Only got one sixth place finish so far this season. Wayne Gardner, there's the gap from him in second place. Forget about the 16 car that's hounding him, that's a lap behind. But here is Paolo Montin in third place and the man on a charge, of course, even after he tangled with that Nissan. Second place now in GT300, the 31 car. What a comeback that's been. Spun off on the uh, early stages of the race and now come back to second place. In third place, Yanagida, who has been on a bit of a press on in the second half of this race, despite the 60 kilos of penalty weight on board. In GT500, Nissan's chances of still salvaging a podium rest on this man's shoulders. This is Michael Krum, the German, in the Zanavi number 22 skyline. Currently in fourth place, but unfortunately for him, quite some distance behind Paolo Montin. Here's our race leader, Sugiya Matsuda, doing as his teammate Ralph Furman did in the first half, just blowing everyone away on this race. So the number 64 Nakajima racing car, well and truly on its way to a victory here. That'll be the second it's taken in the series so far. Oh, bad luck for the Calsonic Skyline in the dying stages of the race. That's gone off. Here's Gardner, and there is uh, Montin just behind the Porsche. So that gap has closed up a bit, but I think it's too late for Montin to really make a charge. Yes, looks like Tetsuya Tanaka is going to be out of this race as the bonnet comes up on the skyline. And it's all over for everybody because this man only has one corner to go to take this race out. Sugio Matsuda coming down the straight now to take this round four of the Autobax Japan GT Championship. This historic first ever race in Malaysia. And behind him there's Taniguchi taking GT300 as well. Ralph Furman a very happy man, as well he should be. Two dominant wins they've taken now. Here's Gardner coming through, he's held on for second. Buzzes the team on pit wall as he comes past. And there is Paolo Montina, standout third place. That is two Tom's cars in the top three. Looking down the track in the background. There it is, there's the fourth place Nissan Skyline. Haruhiko Matsumoto, one of the uh, RX-7 drivers, very happy man. So too is Taniguchi, the man behind the wheel, and also Matsuda in that winning Mobile One Honda. Back in pit lane, Furman really getting the treatment there from the Nakajima team. I know it's a Toyota have always won here in the past, but uh, very confident with the car. And I uh, knew if I pushed, I, didn't, I don't think anyone could drive around here quicker than me. I really enjoy the circuit, so I thought we had a great, great chance. Yes, the first two races I, we gained no points, so we, me and Ralph, between us, we have decided we needed real big points here uh, to you know, go for the championship this year. Gardner did think he had a chance of attacking for the lead. Um, but unfortunately I caught up to a couple of other uh, Toyotas, the Selmo a car, and I couldn't understand it. I thought they were supposed to help me, they were blocking me. And uh, I was trying to get up the inside and they came back on me and uh, I had to go on the grass to avoid them, which made me spin. Montin's accepting no blame for his clash with the number 23 Nissan. Kageyama. He watched many times in the mirror and maybe when we touch a little bit, he mistake the break point and uh, he break a little bit more, a little bit more early and 
we touch a little bit and he he spun. He can trust. He could trust his car. Yeah. Then he uh, he trusts the wind. Then uh, his uh, his mind is a very cool. Yeah. Of course, we can. We can. We can. So it's a win by 18 seconds for Furman and Matsuda. Suchir and Gardner are five seconds clear of teammates Kurosawa and Montin. Nissan is denied a farewell podium for its retiring skyline, but still gets fourth place. In GT300, the Amamiya RX-7 ends up with a win by half a minute. Ahead of the Nitta, Takagi, Toyota MRS. And series leaders Yamano and Yadagida, another 19 seconds back. The win here catapults Furman and Matsuda back into the lead in the GT500 Drivers' Championship. Wakasaka and Ida retain second. Ito and Schwager a third. GT300, Yamano and Yadagida's third place retains their lead six points clear of Nitta and Takagi. The winner here gives Matsumoto and Taniguchi third place. <laughs>